Previously on The Secret Sits, J.C. Lee Dugard has been kidnapped and held against her will for well over a year. She has endured things that no 11-year-old girl should ever have to endure. Nevertheless, her captivity would carry on for a great deal longer. And that is where we find ourselves while we pick up our story today. Welcome to The Secret Sits. I'm your host, John Dodson. Join us every Thursday as we uncover the secrets behind the world's most fascinating true crime cases. You can find all episodes of The Secret Sits for free on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you are hearing, reach out to us on Instagram and Facebook at The Secret Sits Podcast or on Twitter at Secret Sits Pod. Now, on with our story. Two years later, it is now 1993, and Nancy shows up at the next door with a special Easter dinner, corned beef and cabbage. This is a welcome relief from the constant stream of fast food she had been given for the past two years. JC is now 13, a full-blown teenager, but she did not feel like one. Nancy told her that it sometimes was hard for her to stay and talk to the girl because she feels guilty about taking her in the first place. Nancy is visiting with JC much more often than normal. And when JC thinks on this, she realizes that it's been a few days since she has even seen Philip. That evening, Nancy shows up at the next door and brings a new scary movie for the two of them to watch. She also tells JC that she was going to sleep in here with her that night. JC found this strange because Nancy normally slept wherever Philip slept. So she asked her where Philip was. Nancy told her that he was away and that he was staying with some rich friends on an island. He would be gone for about a month. At this news, JC's heart raced with glee. She would not have to have sex for a month. This made her happy. The duo watched their movie, The Unborn, and during the movie, something made a loud sound outside, and it made both of them jump. Nancy went outside to check on the noise, but she comes back in saying it was nothing. The couple had gotten an actual bed for the next door by this time. JC liked the bed much better than the pull-out sofa. She and Nancy slept together on the bed, but in the morning, Nancy got up and was gone. JC knew that she would probably not see her again until the evening, and the loneliness began to set in again. After a month, Philip returned. JC was actually glad that he had returned. She found him easier to talk to than Nancy. When Philip returned, she noticed that he now had a strange device attached to his ankle. Philip explained to JC that he had not been away to a rich friend's island. He had in fact been in jail. The police had come to his home for an inspection and they had found drug paraphernalia in the house which was a violation of his parole. The two then took a nap on the bed. JC fell asleep, wondering if this would be the end of Philip hurting her. But in the back of her mind, she knew it would not be. JC was in her room watching the Today Show. It was now December 25th, 1993, and today would mark her 907th day in captivity. Even today, on Christmas, JC felt lonely. She was alone most of her time. Ever since Philip came back from jail, he had gotten into reading the Bible. He told her that he was trying to stop drugs, and when he went on a run, they were now much shorter, and he did not do additional drugs in between raping her. He also almost exclusively saved sex with JC for his runs. In between the runs, he mostly just made the girl masturbate him. JC was simply glad he did not put it inside of her. 
she thought that was the worst part. Philip is also now hearing some strange voices. He says that they are coming from the TV. He can hear them, even when the TV is muted. JC doesn't know what to think. She's just careful not to upset him. Philip and Nancy treat her the best when she has a optimistic attitude. As JC sat alone in her room on Christmas morning, she wonders what's happening back in her real home. She thinks longingly about her mother and the special Christmas dinner she was making for the family. Philip told her that he and Nancy would be in his mom's house having Christmas dinner with her, but they would stop by later and bring her some. Philip and Nancy got another kitten for JC, and she loved it very much. She named this cat, and she was allowed to keep it for a few months. It began to grow, and JC taught it some tricks, and she made a friendship bracelet, which she used as a collar. But then, Philip told her that the cat had to go. Somehow, she knew she had not wanted another cat because she could not bear going through having one taken away again. JC had been moved back into the studio as Easter Sunday rolled around. It was now 1994. Philip told the girl that some police had been in the neighborhood lately, so it was safer to keep her in the somewhat soundproofed studio. He also instructed her to walk quietly so she would not draw unwanted attention. Philip, Nancy, and JC spent the whole day together that Easter, and they had a nice ham dinner that Philip's mom, Pat, had made. The married couple tell JC to close her eyes, so she does. And then when she is told to open them, she sees a big, beautiful Easter basket right in front of her. JC told the couple how much she loved it, and Philip told her that there was something they wanted to talk to her about. The couple told her that they had noticed that she seems to have put on some weight, and that she was also kind of walking funny. JC agreed with the couple, and she also told them that her stomach had been feeling kind of funny. Philip said, We think you may be pregnant. JC was immediately stunned and scared. In the days following this revelation, she becomes worried. How would she be able to have a baby? Weren't they born in hospitals? What if Philip took the baby away the same way he had with the kittens? But as her body began to grow and expand, racking her ribs with the pains of pregnancy, Philip only seemed happy, and he never said anything about giving away her baby after it was born. JC was moved back to the next door. Philip had installed a new wall to make two rooms out of one. He had also painted the room a bright yellow. JC was given the room without windows. On one evening, just before the baby was due, Philip came to the next door and told JC that something was going on and they needed to leave. JC did not know what to think. She had not left the rooms in this backyard for two years now. She immediately felt scared. JC asked Philip what was going on, but he ignored the question. He told her not to worry. He would make sure that she and the baby were safe. He finally told her that someone had told him the police were going to raid the house, and they had to go. He put a blanket over the girl and led her out to the van. He told her that Nancy was waiting in the van and she had everything ready to go. As they reached the van, Philip tells JC to lay down in the back and they would cover her with some boxes. She knows it is pointless to argue, so she drags her swollen stomach over the floorboards of the van and settles on her side. She's so uncomfortable. The van revs to life and they pull out of the driveway. JC falls asleep during the endless and seemingly pointless driving. When she wakes up, the van has stopped. Philip helps peel the pregnant teen out of the back seat. She's now stiff due to the awkward position she's been riding in for way too long. As she exits the vehicle, she can see they have arrived at a single wide trailer. 
She climbs the steep steps up to the trailer door, and she takes a seat on a couch in the living room. JC is told that this trailer used to belong to Philip's friend Virginia, and that she left it to him when she had passed away. JC asked to use the bathroom. Her bladder was somewhat out of control due to her pregnancy. As she goes to the bathroom, JC is overjoyed that there is an actual flushing toilet, a luxury she has not had in two years. That night, JC slept on the couch in the living room while Philip and Nancy slept in the bedroom. The next morning, she awakes to the couple already up and in the kitchen. They tell her that they are going to leave her here in the trailer for a few hours while they drive back to the house to make sure that the coast is clear. JC begins to cry. She doesn't want to be left here on her own. What would happen if they never came back? How could she survive on her own and pregnant? But the couple reassured her that everything would be fine and they left. After taking some time to look around the dusty old trailer, JC once again fell asleep on the couch. She was startled awake by the sound of the front door being unlocked. As the door swung open and JC saw Philip and Nancy had returned, she felt happy. The couple tells her that it's now safe to return to the house, but they still wanted to wait until it was dark outside again. Once again, she is sequestered to the floorboards of the back seat. As they drive in the dark of the evening, the movement of the van begins to make JC nauseous. She could not hold back the tides, and out everything came. The problem now was that she had to lay in her own vomit until they arrived back at the house. When they finally get back to the house, JC exits the van and she tells Nancy she's real sorry for the mess. But hey, what was she supposed to do? JC had no idea how to take care of a baby. Hell, she's pretty much a baby herself. So she begins watching as many baby shows as she can. Philip rented birthing videos from the library and they watched these videos together. They only served to scare JC even more than she already was. Each day melted into the next until one day, while JC sat in her room watching Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, she began having sharp pains. She tried to push them aside and not think about it, but the pains grew sharper and sharper. No one has come to check on her today, and the door was locked. She tries to remain calm while she waits on someone to come and check on her. Nancy showed up around 5 p.m. She sees JC doubled over in pain and she runs to get Philip. The couple begin getting everything ready for the baby to arrive, and the contractions last into the night. JC thought that she'd peed on herself, as she had the day the couple tasered her and put her into the back of their car so long ago. But actually, her water had broken. Philip tells her that it would be not long now. As JC begins to push, the pain increases. She's confused why nothing is happening. Philip reaches inside of JC to fill the baby, and he discovers that the umbilical cord is wrapped around the baby's neck. He uses his fingers to remove the cord, and with her next push, the baby is out. As the couple clean up the baby and JC, she begins to nurse the baby. It feels strange to the young girl, but they both fall asleep, exhausted from their efforts. The baby had been born on August 18th, 1994, at 4.35 a.m. JC Dugard is now 14 years old. She is now a mother, and she is still terrified. JC was in disbelief that this entire atrocity was happening to her. But at this point, she's grateful for one thing, her daughter. Philip had chosen the name for the baby, Angel. JC did not protest this name. She actually thought it was quite fitting for the baby girl. At 14 years old, JC does not have any experience being a parent. Her baby girl will only fall asleep while she is bounced on her mother's shoulder. JC is experiencing discomfort from nursing, and she's not been sleeping well since Angel was born. 
Philip got a rocking chair from the Salvation Army for JC's room. The chair was very ugly, with peach-colored fabric, but JC was still grateful to have it. She would sit in the chair for hours, rocking her little baby, and singing, You Are My Sunshine, to her, just as her mother had done for her. After three months of growing, Angel loves to play peekaboo and this little piggy. JC felt that Nancy and Philip did a good job at providing whatever was needed for the baby. She had plenty of water, diapers, and wipes. Angel was growing into a healthy and inquisitive baby. Philip and Nancy are now sleeping in the studio, just next door to JC's room in the next door. Sometimes if JC needs a break from the baby, they will take it to the studio to spend time with them there. JC still dreams about her friends she's not seen in so long now. These dreams make her feel even more isolated and lonely. By this time, JC has long stopped asking Philip to go home. It's just too painful for her to think about, and she just hopes that someday things will get better. The year turns to 1996, and Angel is now a toddler. The next door has now had more of a makeover, so that Angel also has a room. Philip has been working on new fencing in the backyard, so Angel can go out and play. JC is looking forward to this. She can't wait to feel the sunlight on her face out in the yard. The summer came and then went, and it turned into fall. Philip had not had sex with JC much since she had given birth to Angel but there were a few incidents. He had only done a few runs in the past couple of years, but once is all it takes, and JC comes to realize that she is once again pregnant. Philip is still saying he's working on putting in a fence in the backyard so that JC and Angel can go outside, but this has not happened yet. Angel gets to spend time outside with Nancy, but as long as the new fence is not built, JC cannot go outside with her daughter. Philip has constructed a new room in the next door for the toilet. Sometimes JC will go in there and just sit on the toilet, just to take a break from her baby. But after some time has passed, Angel will begin to beat on the door and scream. She can't stand being separated from her mother. Philip keeps telling JC that one day she will enjoy the sex but she does not believe him. She never enjoys it when he forces her to have sex with him. He keeps telling her that he is trying to stop, but he has a problem. JC believes that Philip truly loves Angel, and he told her that one day, while Angel was with him in the studio, he held her in his arms and he prayed, God, please don't ever let me hurt this little girl. He said that God had cured him of his sexual problem and that he would never touch JC again. She wants to believe this, but it's hard to truly believe. Philip brings fish and chips from Jack in the Box for dinner. JC smiles and thanks him. He then tells her that they have a surprise for her, but she needs to go to the studio so he can put it together. This is when JC tells Philip that her stomach has been hurting and she thinks that she is once again pregnant. Philip tells her that he thought she was pregnant as well, but she did not need to worry. He would take care of everything. And he says that he knows it will be another girl because God knows that's what he needs. JC Dugard is now 17 years old and she's about to have her second child with her abductor, her captor, her rapist. When JC goes back to her room, there's a big red bunk bed. The bottom bed was a full-size bed, and the top bed was a twin. Philip has been working on the fence outside almost every day, and it is finally done. She is so excited to go outside. This gave JC a feeling of impending freedom, even if it's only freedom from the confines of her small room. 
Philip wants it to be a surprise, so JC closes her eyes and Philip takes her hand. He takes Angel's hand and his other hand, and he walks them out into the backyard. JC can feel the sunlight warm on her face. There is one picnic table and a bench to sit on. Philip and Nancy tell her that they can now have barbecues outside and they can be a real family. This makes JC think about how nice it would be to have a family again. Also outside, there's an old dresser. On top of this dresser, there was a small cage. As JC and Angel approach it, they see it contains a guinea pig. Philip tells her that it belonged to a neighbor who had too many pets, so he gave it to Philip. Philip said that she could have it. Angel snuggled her face into the guinea pig, and this makes the small girl giggle. JC had gotten into a new TV show called Seventh Heaven. In this show, the family has a dog named Happy. So JC decided to name their new pet Happy. Nancy, however, does not like this name, and she insists on calling the small animal Guinevere, even though it's a boy. Philip has encouraged Nancy to become more like friends with JC, but JC still thinks Nancy acts strange a lot of times. One time, she told JC that Philip would take her to the playground. Then, she would have to go interact with the small girls. She would get the girls to do the splits or to sit on a bench with their legs spread wide apart. This was all recorded on a secret camera. Then Philip would use these videos to masturbate. JC could still not understand Philip's sexual problem, but she was glad he was not having sex with her anymore. She hoped that he also left those little girls from the playground alone as well. Philip rented a computer from a rental store. He also purchased a Canon printer because he wanted to start his own business. His plan was to make business cards out of his home. He wanted this business to be successful enough that Nancy could quit her job when the new baby comes. JC is now allowed to go to the studio at certain times of the day, especially when Nancy is at work and she can use the computer. She plays learning games on the computer with Angel. She loves the Sesame Street letter game the most. Philip is using Corel Print House as the program to make the business cards. And JC also uses this program to make things for Angel. She's making a scrapbook, and she likes to write stories on a program called Word. Philip has shown JC some of the business cards he's designed and the 17-year-old could not help but think that she could do a better job with the designs. The cards Philip made were also crooked because he insisted on cutting 10 sheets at a time. JC told him that if he cut one at a time, he would have a better product. He said that would take too long, but JC proves him wrong. The next day, Philip comes home with his first paying job for the business, a set of wedding invitations. JC sits and mocks up a design for the invites, and when Philip brings it to the client the next day, they are thrilled. The client has picked out cards for the designs, and the job turns out great. JC is very proud of herself. This begins a new adventure for the girl. She designs the jobs Philip acquires, while he takes care of the printing and delivery. JC is so excited to no longer be bored all of the time. On November 12th, 1997, JC awakes at 11 p.m. with terrible pains. This had come out of nowhere. Angel is asleep beside her, so she gently shakes the girl awake. She has to take her next door to the studio. She tells the girl that she thinks the baby is coming, so they need to go get daddy. They begin to walk to the studio. JC holding Angel's hand until she must release it to open the heavy door to the studio. She steps into the darkness of the studio and flicks on the light. Philip is asleep on the bed, so JC shakes him awake with a smile on her face. She hopes that he will not get mad for being woken up in the middle of the night. He awakes with a start and asks what's the matter. JC told him that she thought the baby was coming, 
So Philip wakes Nancy, and the couple flies into action. Towels, water, the first aid kit, whatever they needed to deliver yet another baby. Philip tells JC not to worry. They knew what they were doing, and they had done it before. As JC lays down, she begins to feel slightly better. Nancy turns on the TV for Angel, so she can focus on something else and not worry. She's confined to the adjoining room and cannot see what's happening during the birth. The baby arrived at 2.15 a.m. on November 13th, 1997. Philip once again named this baby. The name he picked this time was Starlet. Philip and Nancy told JC to pick a name for her middle name, but it should be a biblical name. Philip is now reading the Bible all of the time. JC's not sure what he's looking for in that book. He has torn the Bible apart twice now. One time, he threw pages into the bucket outside he uses to defecate in. Philip tells JC that with God's help, he was starting to understand the voices in his head and that God has cured him of his sexual problems. But once again, JC will believe that when she sees it. The new baby is now two weeks old. 17-year-old JC is now a mother of two. Philip and Nancy now let JC stay in the studio with them. They are one big happy family, according to the kidnappers, who are now holding three people captive. JC's days and nights are now consumed by her children and printing for less. She is trying to wean Angel off of nursing. She is three years old now, and she cannot nurse both children at the same time. JC has decided that Starlet just doesn't fit the new baby, and they begin calling her by her middle name. We will call her G. G was born with a small cyst at the end of her right eyebrow. Philip thinks it's fine, but JC wants a doctor to look at it, just to be safe. Philip tells her to monitor it, and if it gets bigger, maybe Nancy can take her to a free clinic to have it checked. Philip is gone most days, trying to get clients for his printing business. They now have a CB radio, so they can stay in contact during the day. When they need to contact him, they turn the radio on and say, Breaker, breaker, Skywalker, do you copy? This was Philip's chosen handle, Skywalker. He told JC and Angel to also pick handles for the radio. JC chose Data because he was her favorite character on Star Trek. Angel picks Tinky Winky for the same obvious reason. Nancy's handle is Baby Blue. JC looks forward to when Nancy can quit her job and stay home all of the time. She could use the help with the babies and the printing business. Sometimes when JC looks at her little girl Angel, now three years old, she can see her mother's face, a face which has begun to slip from her memories. Finally, the day arrives when Nancy can stay home full time. Philip says the printing business is now making enough money for them to live on until he gets famous. He's always talking about becoming famous for the music he writes. On the 4th of July, Philip wants the family to climb onto the roof of the barn to watch the fireworks. JC was scared to climb the ladder, and she was even more scared to be on that old roof, afraid that she could fall through with her kids right behind her. But Philip said it was safe, so they all climbed up. Angel is now four, and G is already one, and walking everywhere. It is a warm summer night, and the stars were bright next to a crescent moon. This brings back memories from her mother, and she sings a song to herself that she used to sing with her mother. I see the moon, the moon sees me. God bless the moon and God bless me. JC misses her mom immensely. G does not enjoy the loud fireworks. After all, She's one, so the group climbs back down and goes inside. Philip and Nancy decide to go on a beach trip with the entire family. This makes JC scared because she's not been out in public for quite a long time. 
What if she does something wrong? But Philip tells her that there's nothing to worry about. They arrive at the beach, and JC experiences an overwhelming feeling of freedom, though she knows she's not free. They spent hours on the beach playing, while Philip sat on a beach blanket reading his Bible. After they eat lunch, they go for a stroll down the beach. But as Philip's back begins to hurt, they decide to pack it in and head back home. A few weeks after their beach trip, Nancy says she wants to talk to Philip about them, meaning Nancy and JC, going to get their nails done. This scares JC. She doesn't want to go outside. She's too afraid. But one day, Philip comes to her and hands her a $100 bill. He tells her that Nancy is going to take her somewhere fun. JC reluctantly climbs into the car with Nancy, and they head off to the nail salon. They soon arrive, and Nancy tells the woman working there that they want a manicure. The woman talks to JC while working on her nails. She asks her questions, like she would with any client. JC answers automatically. She does not feel like she's really there. She doesn't feel like an actual person. She feels like no one can even see her. After the nail salon, Nancy takes her to Jack in the Box for lunch and they eat in the car. When they arrive back home, Philip is sitting there, reading his Bible, and the kids are watching The Lion King. It was as if nothing had changed, but everything had changed. She had gone out in public and nobody had noticed. No one had even cared to ask who she was. For their next outing, Nancy took JC to Walmart. Her hands were shaking the whole time. She wondered if anyone would notice her. The problem was that nobody did notice her. Nobody noticed for a very long time. The years ticked by, one after another. 1998 turned into 2002, and nobody noticed. 2002 turned into 2003. Nobody noticed. 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007. All of these years went by, and J.C. Dugard, with her two young daughters, remained captive, and nobody ever noticed them. Join us next week for our final episode, The Escape. We dance round in a ring and suppose, but the secret sits in the middle and knows. The Secret Sits podcast is researched and written by me, John Dodson. Audio engineering by Gabriel Dodson. Original logo artwork provided by Tony Leigh.